Please be seated. This is the third Sunday of Advent, Advent, and our preparations are brought to a heightened intensity as the day draws near of the coming of our Savior. And we purify ourselves to readiness by looking to Him who Himself is pure. The Gospel today has John the Baptist as uh, the main character. John the Baptist is, I would, you know, I would look at him as uh, the last of the, the prophets before Jesus, last of the Old, Old Testament prophets. And you think like me, you think, you know, up to this, uh, at this point, the people of God, Israel, would already have grown after centuries of, of being taught, of, be, of hearing the, the, the word of God through the prophets. Uh, having said that, still, still, they were just a, a shadow of things to come. Actually, on this side, where we are in the New Testament, this side of the, uh, the, the coming into the flesh of our Lord, we still don't grasp it fully, you know. Uh, we still don't grasp it fully, which is why we look at him who is pure, who is the, the light, the pure witness. <clears throat> um, but the Old Testament, the prophets, they, they're not the very image. Jesus is. Jesus, according to the writer of Hebrews, is the exact representation of the Father, the radiance of his glory, an exact representation of God's nature. Let me just, you know, uh, contrast or just to compare Jesus and John. John, uh, John was very different from Jesus. Uh, in fact, he many times is the, was the opposite of Jesus. John saw the day of the Lord as something to dread. God using an axe to cut the root of a tree that does not produce. Jesus reveals God the Father as one who prunes, one who restores. John lamented. Jesus rejoiced. John sang a dirge, a funeral dirge. Jesus played the flute. John ate locusts and honey and neither ate nor drank. And he was, called, he was said to have a demon. Jesus came eating and drinking and he was accused to be a glutton and a drunkard. In fact, he filled uh, like a, a 500 gallon, uh, that amount anyway, uh, transformed water into uh, wine and the volume was like you know, your average overhead tank at home. That much. John warned everyone, Jesus invited everyone. John wore, wore camel's hair, Jesus wore a fine cloak. So fine it had no seams, so fine the, the centurions gambled over it, refused to, to tear it and divide it among them because it was you know, probably to them signature clothes. John, according to him, God chops dead trees. Jesus, uh, according to Jesus, God is a patient cultivator who would wait one year for one single fig. That's how patient the, the father, Jesus, paints. According to John, God's, uh, God is wrathful. He's coming with vengeance. According to Jesus, the father is a shepherd who looks for his lost sheep. Until, I don't know if you've noticed that, until he finds it. He looks for the lost until he finds them. According to John, God could walk off and leave you. According to Jesus, God's, God waits like the father of the prodigal son. I'm not, I'm not knocking John, okay? John is a witness. He was a good witness. According to Jesus, he was the greatest among those born of women. Jesus' very words, Jesus' very uh, vetting of him and endorsing of him. But he was not the light. He himself said that. He was not the light. He was not the pure witness. He's not the radiance of the glory of the Father. He's not his exact representation. Jesus is the light. 
Jesus is the pure witness. Jesus is the final word. He's not a shadow. He's the reality. According to Colossians chapter 2, uh, he's not a shadow of things to come. He's the reality. It's found in him. So John was asked, are you the one? He said, no. I'm a witness. And so he sends to Jesus, his disciples, and asks him, and, and ask him, are you the one? And Jesus said to the disciples, this is what you tell John. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the deaf hear, and the good news is preached to the poor. What do you think? What do you think? This is the pure witness of the Father. Jesus came to reveal the Father. He came to make him known. He perfectly portrayed God as forgiving, not vengeful, but forgiving. Isaiah 61 <clears throat> says, the reading earlier, says that God will come with a vengeance. But I would think God will come with a vengeance on his enemies, not on those he, he comes to restore. He comes with vengeance on, on his enemies because he is he desires to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the year of Jubilee. And what, you know what the year of Jubilee is? Simple. May utang ka, wala ka ng utang. Hindi mo nababayaran. So you would think, eh, paano yung justice ng year of Jubilee? Wala. Wala ka ng babayaran. Tapos. That's the year of Jubilee. Eh, pwede, gulangan mo na yung bumbay, no? Sabi mo, mangutang ka ng siguro a few days before the year of Jubilee. Di ba? Tapos, oy, January 1, year of Jubilee. Wala na utang. But that, that's the idea of Jubilee. Forgiven as if you have nothing, no, no debt, no, no, no nothing to your record. The, that's the heart of God. He loses those in bondage. Yun yun eh. You're in bondage. May utang ka, you're loosed, you're freed. That's the year of Jubilee. That's what he proclaims. <clears throat> because he sends his Messiah on whom the Spirit rests to proclaim that. And he is the Lamb of God who what? Takes away. Takes away the sin. Takes away that which is the source of bondage. Takes away. Hindi pinapabayaran, tinatanggal. That's what jubilee means, tinatanggal. Does that mean you, you abuse it? No. It means you appreciate it, you understand it, and you, you, you desire to be like Him. Because God, our God sees us as people who need, who need healing. He's a loving phys physician, not an angry judge. That's how I see Him. And only by grace does this happen. Only by God's initiative. We didn't call upon him. We didn't know we were in sin. We didn't know we were dead. We didn't. He did. And he could not stand it from his throne, seeing us helpless. And so by his initiative, by his doing, we are in Christ Jesus. We were helpless. We were dying. He saves and he's all powerful, you know. He could have wiped us off the face of the earth and created a second Adam without having to, to send Jesus to earth and uh, making him incarnate. He could have done that. He could have destroyed us, but he didn't. He doesn't. That's not who God is. He doesn't destroy. He creates. He doesn't destroy us. He creates us. He could have... <clears throat> could have wiped us off. You know, at his arrest, I mentioned this at earlier, the Advent hour, at his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said he could have, he could have summoned 12 legions of angels. angels. That's uh, 72,000 angels. Each one with, uh, with an ability greater than uh, nuclear bombs. But he didn't. He didn't. Because he didn't come to destroy. He didn't come to steal, kill, or destroy. He came 
to restore. That's why he came. Uh, I also mentioned this earlier. <clears throat> I'll be a little more graphic this time. But <clears throat> uh, at the Last Supper, Jesus, it says in John 13, Jesus knew that all power and authority have been given to him by the Father. He had omnipotent power, power in his hands. And, <clears throat> and that's what he, he knew. He understood that. What would you and I do with universal omnipotent power? What would you do? What would, what would a very calm and composed gentleman like this guy do? What do you think? What do you think he would do with all the military power in the world? What do you think this guy would do? Lalo niyo ba yan? Hindi yan estudyante ng ROTC, ha? <clears throat> yan yung presidente, batang presidente ng North Korea. What would an expert in anger management like this guy do? Delikado, di ba? Delikado. I mean, he only had gas chambers and he murdered 6 million Jews. What if he had more power? Imagine that. Imagine the havoc he would have wreaked on all the earth. What would the Chinese president do? What would the, uh, the Russian president do? What, what would the Viking do? What would the Roman emperor do? Somebody said, British uh, legislator, I think he was, uh, said, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Not true with Jesus. You know what he did? I'll tell you what he did. Right at the Last Supper. What he did was, he got on his knees, he girded himself with a towel, got a basin of water, and he washed the feet of those who would betray him. There you go. That's what he did. That's the Jesus who just found out he had omnipotent power. Is that what you and I would have done? Siguro ang gagawin natin, you may atraso sa akin. Babalikan, re-res bakan ko na. Ito na yung pagkakataon ko. That's, that's God flexing His omnipotent power. Tayo, maninindak tayo, di ba? Pag macho, sisindakin mo yung kaaway mo. Ganun eh. But that's how He flexes His omnipotent power. That's the God we serve. All-powerful and yet not vengeful, but restorative. Would you do that to Judas? Would you? Would you do that to Peter, who would be betray you three times after saying, De, pinapangako ko sa'yo, Lord. Itong, itong labing, dalo, labing isang duwag na mga disipulo mo, tatakbuhan ka, tatakbuhan yung mga kaaway. Pero ako, I would go to prison with you, I would die with you. And Jesus knew that he would deny him three times. He told him. But he didn't condemn him. How did he reach out to him? How did he make him <clears throat> remorseful and repent and weep bitterly after denying him? By washing his feet. That's what divine omnipotent power looks like. Man, we need to, to learn a lot. Because we, even we, Christians, even Christians, not, I'm not talking about the world, but even Christians would think, eh, bakit ko ibibless tong si tao na to? Eh, alam ko naman na galit sa akin yan. Alam ko namang sinisiraan ako yan. At alam kong sisiraan pa niya ako. May plano pa rin. Kung, kung alam man natin, no? Divine omnipotent power displayed. We wouldn't do good to a betrayer, to somebody who would abandon us. But Jesus did. And you would think, hindi ba pangungunsinti yan? Hindi ba parang, ano? Hindi ba parang dapat disiplina? You know, God heals us. Like this is, you know, I said earlier, God heals us. He, he doesn't uh, 
threaten evil out of us. He heals us because he sees it as a disease and we're helpless. We couldn't do anything against it. We need his power. Kahit paluin na tayo ng paluin, hindi pa rin tayo ma... Hindi pa rin natin kaya yung, yung kapangyarihan ng sin and death. It would take him to heal us. Behold, he comes. Salvation comes. And that's the way for salvation. His kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom doesn't repay evil for evil. His kingdom is not sword against sword. His kingdom is not dog eat dog. His kingdom is serve. His kingdom is offer your other cheek. His kingdom is walk, the other, walk an extra mile. His kingdom is give your coat also when they take your inner garment. Let's be clear-headed about this. St. Saint, Saint Paul said in his letter to the Colossians, to the Thessalonians, being sons, let's be alert. Let's be sober. That means clear-headed <clears throat> about who our Father is, who He is we're waiting for. He's not destined us to wrath, same uh, letter says in chapter 5. He is not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation and His promise. And what does he encourage us to do? Build up one another. Encourage one another. With the good news. Not scare each other with bad news. Encourage one another with the good news. And be like God. Do not repay evil for evil. <clears throat> and live the kingdom life. And chapter 5, by the way, uh, starts with, don't be con too concerned about the time. Just, you know, just wait for God. Be like Him. Don't be too concerned about the time. Because faithful is he who has promised to you and who calls you, and he will bring it to pass. He's not slow about his promise, but he is patient. He's not willing that any, any should perish. <coughs> the collect, <coughs> concluding collect we will pray later, goes, Grant Almighty God that all men, all men, recognize the surpassing greatness of your promises to us and their fulfillment all around us. There's this Old Testament reading out of Isaiah 25 that is always read at resurrection masses. And it, it talks about, and you've heard this before, it talks about uh, uh, how that on that day God will prepare a lavish banquet on, that, on a mountain and we give us uh, choice uh, aged wine and choice meat. But the conclusion of that, on verse, in verse 9, it says this, and it will be said in that day, behold, this is our God for whom we have waited. This is our God for whom we waited. Ito hinintay natin. Pagdating ng araw, ito hinintay natin. That He might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. Which God is he talking about? <clears throat> Which God? This God. From verses 6 to 8. The Lord of hosts who will have prepared a lavish banquet for us. <clears throat> uh, for all peoples, actually, not just for us. For all peoples. A banquet of aged wine and choice pieces with marrow. The one who will have swallowed up the covering which was over all peoples. Okay? Gentiles. Ang ibig sabihin niyan. All Gentiles. The veil stretched over all nations. The one who will have vengefully swallowed up death for all time. Death is a poison that, that was killing us. And you know what Jesus did? God did by, by sending his son to be human like us. He took upon that poison on our behalf to take it away from us. By doing so, what happened? It killed him. It killed him. And that's how he, he swallowed up death for all time. The one who will have wiped tears away from all faces <coughs> and removed the reproach of his people from all the earth. The one who spoke and fulfilled his promise. This is the God for whom we are waiting. I don't know what, how it will happen. I don't know. I don't know how he will gather all peoples. 
They still have free will. They still could resist. I don't know. All I know is this is our God. All I know is, is He has spoken. All I know that is He has promised. And all I know is that is our hope. And that is the way it is in the kingdom of our God. Let us all stand. <clears throat>